All right, so this is going to be a tutorial on the tools that are needed for hanging drywall. These are just commonly used tools that are used on everything from a new home construction project to a bathroom or kitchen remodel. So first tool you're going to need is a, a tape measure. Um, I think it's pretty obvious, but this is going to be used to make marks on your drywall so you know where to cut out anything such as a, a window or door that might be in the way that you need to cut around which brings us to our next tool, which is a, a knife. This is going to be used to make all your cuts on your drywall. When you make your cut, um, you're going to have to cut the other side of the drywall as well because when you make the break, there's paper on their side that's going to need to be cut as well. And um, you're just not going to be able to, to get that with your first cut. So you need to, when you make the break, you need to flip it over and, and cut the paper as well. Um, this tool is actually optional, but um, a lot of crews use it. It's a drywall router. It makes things a lot easier, especially when you're going around things like electrical outlets or light switches. But a lot of um, a lot of crews will hang this hang an entire sheet over a window or door and then just cut out the section with this, which um, usually just the section of the drywall, whether it's small or large, just pops right out, which definitely saves a lot of time. Um, this is an alternative to the drywall router, but um, it, it does the same thing. It, it, you can use it to make cuts around electrical outlets or windows and doors. So this is actually a, a drywall screw gun that's made specifically for drywall because it's got a chuck on the end of it, which allows you to adjust the, the depth of the screw so you can sink it into the, to the correct depthness. And um, you don't want to... You don't want to screw it in too much, but you don't want to screw it in not enough. You want to screw it in just below the the paper on the drywall, so when you go to put mud over your screw holes, that everything sits flush and the screw isn't exposed. This is a T square. Um, this definitely speeds up the process. It allows you to make straight cuts with your knife. It's a um, serves more of a guide than it does a measuring tool, but there's a, there's a scale on it or, or numbers, so you can use this to measure down on the sheet instead of your tape if you prefer to do that. So when it comes to the finishing, there's different size knives. Usually on your first coat, you start off with a, a smaller size knife for the, the screw holes and the joints. And then as you proceed to your second and third coats, you use a larger knife. This allows you to float the mud out, which allows um, allows the wall to end up being a lot more smooth because if you only put on one coat with a, a narrow knife, it would there'd just be a big budge in where the joint is and you would see it once the paint once the wall gets painted. So <clears throat> a larger knife allows you to float the mud out more, which once you sand it will hide the joint really well. This obviously is just a tray which you use to put your mud in so you don't have to carry around a big heavy five gallon bucket. Um, once all your your joints are covered with mud you're going to use a sanding sponge which this is what that is. Um, most of the time crews won't won't sand until they're done with at least the second coat because usually the first coat they don't put on a whole lot of mud, so there's no need to sand and um, kick up all that dust. 